In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The author of the Gospel of John likes to talk about love. And it's certainly in this Gospel reading. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, we could sort of call what he's talking about as the community of love, a community of love. So let's focus on that for a minute, the community of love. And what that is, is the way John describes it as we talk about it, is God the Father, God, God the Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, all of the Trinitarian elements of the God that we worship, and believers in that God being one through a shared love, a love that comes from God. I mean, a community formed around God's love, God sharing God's love with us and we with each other. And it's all, it's all in motion, a community of love. He ends this chapter by saying, I made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. It's a big statement. It's a deep statement. You almost want to say, really? It sounds so good. And it is good. It is the good news of Jesus Christ. And we're not talking about a cuddly, a cuddly comfort club. We're not talking about that. We're talking about God's community of love. In the beginning of the next chapter, just after, after all this talk about love, you know what happens is that uh, Jesus and his disciples went across the Kidron Valley to a garden and Judas steps up and betrays Jesus. And the whole arrest and, and brutalization and death of Jesus comes. Community of love, again, we're not talking about something that is cuddly and comfortable, basically. But we are talking about something that is of God and of God's people and that we are a part of. So hold this right here, community of love. Because something else is going on in today's lessons as well. Um, this could be called In Between Sunday. In Between Sunday, because it happens every year. Um, Ascension, Ascension Day was last Thursday. It comes 40 days after Easter Day. Ascension Day, that window. Ascension Day, when we remember that the risen Christ has died rose from the dead, spent 40 days on earth teaching healing, and then the risen Christ ascends into the heavens. A very important event because it means that he is gone. The risen Christ, as those people knew him, Jesus the man, is gone. He comes back to us and to people throughout the ages but it is a change, it is a transition. And Jesus even says, I am going so that the Holy Spirit can come. Pentecost Day, that's next Sunday. So this is the time in between the disappearance of the risen Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit to form believers, to be church, to be a community of love. You see what's going on? community of love, in between, in between Sunday. It's sort of whiplash. But remember again, Ascension Day is when Jesus disappears and his message to those who are listening is, go to Jerusalem and wait. Worship and wait. And that's what they do. And when the Holy Spirit comes, then things change. But you see what Jesus said? 
um, the risen Christ didn't say, I want you to organize the most effective church you can imagine. Um, that would be people designing what God's community would be. And that's not what he said. He said, go to Jerusalem and wait because there's more coming. There's more God coming. And listen to that spirit. Listen to that Holy Spirit. And let your lives be led by the love that you feel from God. It's a totally, totally different message. So how do we put those two things together? In between Sunday, you know, going community of love. Well, here's a possibility. It just, be, it just could be that the path to that true community of love, which all of us are called to be a part of, that that path is through in between times, in between experiences. The word liminality is used by anthropologists. The Celtic Christians said a thin place. But experiences that we have that are some sort of interesting, affecting, uh, important experiences of times when the spiritual and the physical come together and we have a new insight into where we find God. And, and it's going to be, it's going to, it often happens in ways that we don't expect and that's what I mean being in between doing this and doing that or going in this direction. It actually has sort of a history in anthropology, um, tribal organizations in ancient times would have an ordeal that um, for the males, for the ordeal was to go out and do something that was very important. But they went out into the forest, into the wilderness with the guidance of the God that they believed in. And then they were sort of leaving their youth and becoming a man. It's that kind of idea. Um, I remember um, that kind of transition, that kind of in-between time that was important to me one time in, the, in uh, September of 1969. Uh, my, my hair was a little bit longer. It was right about here. My hair was right, right about here. And I reported to basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey. And uh, we got in that night, and uh, they woke us up at 5 o'clock. And by 5.30, I didn't have any hair. <laughs> But they lined us up, sent us through, and said, sit still, and shh, it was all gone. They said, pack up your clothes, send them back home, we're going to give you some new clothes. So we went in and we got our new clothes. And it was an in-between time. I mean, I knew I was not a citizen. I mean, I was, I, was, I was still a citizen, but I wasn't who I was before that barber took care of all my hair. And I... I, I belong to God, I belong to my family, I belong to a whole lot of things, but now I belong to the Army. I belong to the National Guard, the Tennessee National Guard. And I was going to spend six to nine months, you know, being a faithful soldier or in training. Um, it was a transitional time. I was in between. The early Christians did something very similar, very similar. So it's sort of, it, it's, a, it's a human thing. The early Christians, um, when they were converted, households, they would go down to the river and a priest or somebody would baptize them. But this is what they did. They would disrobe, they would go in the water and be dunked down three times and then they would come out and uh, a, a nice fresh white robe would be placed around them. And in that transitional time, you see, they got rid of something and then they got, a new, got new clothes to wear symbolizing of entering into a new identity with God as a Christian. We all are called to be a part of John's community of love. All of us right here at St. James. Every Christian in any place that is gathering in some sort of church or, or event we all, all of us Christians, are called to be a part of the community of love. And it is a challenge, and 
It is a gift. A gathering of believers dependent on God and dependent on each other. In that definition, something that is very clear is that in a community of love, one of the purposes is to give up a focus on ourselves. It's hard for us Americans to do that. But that's a part of living into God's community of love. And to focus more on being dependent on God for direction, for support, for correction, which goes back to something we talk a lot about here, and that is, that is deep prayer. I mean, we've all got skills, we've got all, all got great abilities, but, but how can we be dependent on God every day and asking God to help us learn how to be part, fully part of this community of love? And the other part is when you're a member of an active, vibrant community like that, you also know that uh, you have a responsibility to others and we're dependent on each other. Not just to do something, I mean, they're all, everything we do is important, but not just for like a, you know, a, a supper or something, but I'm talking about the way we live our lives. Uh, in the early church, again, members of the church would actually correct each other if they, in fact, were living, were not living a holy life. I think we're a little bit more bashful about doing that now. But it could be that in a community of love, we could help each other learn how to be more deeply faithful. I think that's what God wants us to do in a way that works. Because in a community of love, it's not about me, it's about us. And it's not about me, it's about God. So here we are, folks. May this be a wonderful day for you. And may you also think about how God might be using you in this community of love to help grow the faith, and how God might really want to work with you as you grow in the faith. It's all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.